Hi everyone, my name is Raheem Kanji. I'm a second year nursing student at George Brown College and Ryerson University's Collaborative Nursing Program. And I'm also a peer leader for the Anatomy Learning Groups. And today we're gonna to be learning about the skeletal system. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the anatomy of bone because I think it's a little bit more complex than other units when you're learning about anatomy. And then in the next chapter, or sorry, in the next video, we're going to be learning about intramembranous ossification. And then the last video, we'll go over endochondral ossification. So let's look at bone. So remember that, again, as we talked about last set of videos, bone is a tissue. It's a connective tissue. And by definition, connective tissues have to have an extracellular matrix in which cells reside. And so the extracellular matrix of bone is calcified and the cells of bone, there's three uh, cells that you need to know of, they're osteoblasts. So osteoblasts, uh, they are the cells that make the extracellular matrix. And then you have osteocytes, which are mature osteoblasts. They maintain the matrix. And then you have osteoclasts, which, which resorb bone, and those break down the matrix. Okay. So let's, we're zooming into the humerus here, and let's look at the type of bone that is made up, uh, that makes up the humerus, and for that matter, any type of bone. So we have compact bone, which is something that we think of. It's that ivory looking smooth uh, bone that uh, coats the outer surface. And then we have spongy bone. So spongy bone is the inside that looks kind of haphazard and irregular and uh, honeycomb like. So compact bone, it's very strong. Uh, it can't resist forces in many different directions, but a force in one or two directions, it's very good at resisting because of its strength. On the other hand, we have spongy bone, and it's not as strong, but it resists compressive forces from many different directions. And this is because of the trabeculae that it has, which we'll, we'll talk about in a bit. So really, having both types of bone allows our... Uh, long bone in this case, to resist forces in many different directions and also resist strong forces. So it becomes a very strong structure. So let's zoom in to this humerus and see what that compact bone, remember we're talking about this bone, what does it look like when we zoom in? So it looks like this. So immediately what you can see is there's these uh, circular units. So there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there, etc. And so these units uh, are called osteons or haversian systems. And so that's simply the functional unit of compact bone. It's what allows for weight bearing and for bones uh, strength. Remember we said that compact bone is very strong. Well, this is why it's very strong. And the reason why an osteon is strong is because it has this lamellae, which are these concentric circles here. So you, you can see I've, I've expanded it. It kind of looks like a telescope. And so these circles are uh, collagen fibers that are arranged in a very particular way. And of course, the way that they're arranged makes the compact bone strong. So let's draw an osteon here. So this is a cross section, obviously. So in the osteon, as we've discussed, we have the lamellae, which are these concentric rings that provide strength to the osteon. And in the center, we have this thing called the central canal. So remember I said that connective tissue, which includes bone, is made up of extracellular matrix and in that pool of extracellular matrix, in this case, bones extracellular matrix is calcified. But in that pool, there's cells that reside. So there are actually cells in this osteon, and they need nourishment just like any other cell in our body. They need oxygen, they need glucose, they need all of those things. Um, and so blood vessels and nerves, they 
enter through the central canal. So you can think of the central canal as um, the major road in a neighborhood. Okay, so we talked about the fact that there are uh, bone cells in this osteon. So where are they? Well, they're in these things called lacunae. So lacunae, basically, it's just like a little house that the um, osteocyte, so the mature bone cell, resides in. Okay, so if we have, like, we're looking at this it's as if it's its own community or neighborhood, let's say in the suburbs of Tor Toronto, where there's actually houses and not condos. So typically when we were in a suburb and there's a street of houses, behind those houses are, is a back alley that connects those houses, right? And so just like that, um, this osteon has lacunae, which are the little houses for the osteocyte, and the lacunae are connected by caniculi. So caniculi are these hair-like canals. I'll highlight it here. Hair-like canals that can connect that connect the lacunae to each other and to the central canal. So let's draw that in pink. So they're gonna connect there, 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 there. Just like hair-like extensions that connect um, all of these neighbors together and to the main road. Okay. So that is the organization of compact bone. So remember we said that the central canal has the blood vessels and nerves to supply these um, osteocytes? Well, we also need a way to connect the central canal, and we do that through a Volkmann's canal. So these are perpendicular um, entrances to for blood vessels, and so they, they connect all the central canals together, um, and they also connect to the periosteum, which is highly innervated and vascularized. So the periosteum is here. So you can think of periosteum as where the blood source is coming from, and then each central canal is the delivery of the blood source to the specific neighborhood of osteocytes within an osteon. And the Volkmann's canal is the canal are the canals that connect um, central canals together. Okay? So I'm just gonna erase this. So that is the organization of compact bone. Whoops, don't want to do that. Compact bone. Okay, so now let's look at spongy bone. So spongy bone, first thing that you must know, it does not have osteon, so it doesn't have that functional unit and that same organization, but it does have um, lamellae. They're just not organized in this um, this ring fashion. Remember we said like this looks like a telescope and if you do a cross section it looks like a ring with a compact bone. With um, spongy bone, the lamellae are like haphazard and irregular and so they form these things called trabiculae um, and that really is what allows spongy bone to resist forces in multiple directions. Okay, so we've covered compact and spongy bone. Now I just want to zoom into the molecular um, components of bone. And one thing I want to highlight, it's important to know that inorganic part of bone, so that's um, where you have the mineral salts, the hydroxyapatates, they actually make up, <coughs> excuse me, most of bone, so 65% of the bone's mass. And then when we look at the organic portion of bone, most people think of um, the cells as the organic portion, but also don't forget that osteoid, which is also the bone matrix, um, it contains ground substance and protein fibers like collagen, which help in terms of the tensile strength and flexibility of bone. So bone strength is not just due to calcium. It is very much also due to collagen fibers as well.